Welcome to Broken Tusk Rising, a Pathfinder 2nd Edition actual play in the Galarian campaign setting. We're playing through the quest for the Frozen Flame adventure path. I'm Sean, and I'm playing Andreas Witchborn, the Human Magus. I'm Jessica, and I'm playing Zancath, the Halfling Fighter. I'm Jeanette, and I'm playing Jonesy, the Human Cleric. This is Josh, and I'm playing Corgo, the Human Barbarian. Last time on Broken Tusk Rising, the heroes defeated two hunters of an unknown origin, defending two tapers that they then led back to the following. They then started on their next task, appointed to them by Grandfather Ewa, scouting out Rockloom, the site of the upcoming Green Moon Ceremony. There they found that the raven monolith had been broken, and the top of the stone had been carried north towards some thick shrubs and trees atop a hill. They tried to enter the foliage, but they were attacked by a vicious swarm of ravens. It was a dangerous situation, but eventually the party defeated the swarm, finishing it off with a powerful spell from Andreas. The ravens fell to the ground, a few giving pitiful flaps before dying. The fight has trampled all over the ground here. Give me a perception check or a survival check to find the tracks again. Oh, jeez. Corgo, what'd you get? 16. All right, Andreas... Got an 18. Jonesy. 14. And Zancath. 23. Whoa. Oh, nice. Goodness. Oh, all right. Cheater. You do find the tracks. All of you spot the tracks. But everyone except for Jonesy also sees something surprising. As you look in the trees, it looks like the ravens have left some shiny objects behind hanging from the branches. Before he heads over, Andreas kind of stumbles off to the side and pulls out a handkerchief and wipes like blood away from his eyes, having been blinded by these ravens. Oh, right. Yeah, you're still recovering I, I, from that. I, 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 something something strange happened to me. I it was everything was was dark. Jones Jonesy was it was black as night. But I could could feel as my as my meteor hammer swung towards the ravens. It was as if as if another hand was guiding them. And he's thinking, I'm thinking like that hero point uh, it turned into a crit and it's totally like Desna is the goddess of luck. Ah, uh, yeah. And Andreas is thinking cool. that Desna like literally was like, guided this, his is, hammer. this is it. And, gu gu and yeah, guided his hand to, to help uh, defeat the, the swarm. I will say that was quite a lucky hit. I mean, uh, blood was flowing from your eyes, and still, you man, that was quite impressive. Uh, I, I can't take the credit for it. It was, it must have been Desna. I, I can't believe it. Does anyone want to do anything about these shiny things? Uh, I'm gonna go check out the shiny things. Okay. Zanketh walks up, has a look. One of them is a gold pendant with a garnet gem. And the other is some kind of cylindrical metallic object. You're going to have to look at it more closely. Uh, okay. Can I reach them, being <laughs> the short person that I am? Oh, let's do just a luck check. Roll a <laughs> d20 and see if you get greater than 10. I got 10 exactly. Oh, well then, no. <laughs> you, you can't okay. reach. <laughs> it's just barely out of your reach. Uh, Zancath is standing underneath them, looking up at them, and uh, without looking over, says, uh, Corgo, dear, could you uh, be so kind as to come assist me with this? Yeah, I'll be there in a second. I got beaks where beaks shouldn't be. <laughs> he's, he's like pulling like, you know, dead bird parts from out from under his tunic, and then he, he can help. All right. Yeah, you can reach it. Just a quick hop up, and you, you grab this metallic object. You look at it more closely, and pretty obvious what it is now that you're looking at it closely this is a lensatic compass that would be obvious I mean, obviously <laughs> obviously you know what a compass is okay i mean corgo maybe hasn't spent a lot of time in very civilized places but you know what a compass is okay this was, is a compass that was just a big intimidating word for josh is what happened okay uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah it looks like a looks like a compass it's a magical compass it's not a magical compass. It's just a compass. Nice try, Sean. I cast, I cast read, <laughs> Andreas casts a read aura on the compass to see if it is magical. Okay. Uh, it is not magical. 
It's not even magical cargo. It probably doesn't even point north. It does point north. How is it doing that without magic? <laughs> uh, d- mm. <laughs> Uh, Andreas, there's this thing called north, and compasses generally point that direction without, not everything, revolves around magic. Well, that's what I'm learning, I guess. I can't believe you didn't know that, sir. Well, I I feel like the fool today. (laughs) It is a lensatic compass. It's an object that you can add, just uh, should be searchable. It will give you a plus one on navigation checks or sense direction checks. Ooh, nice. Plus one circumstance bonus. So who's our survival person then? Well, it would be me. I, I think it. Jonesy's the best by a lot. So then you should add the compass. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. Corgo, what's your survival? I know. I know what north is. I don't need this. <laughs> uh, it's. I think it's a plus four. You're at seven. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So give it to me. I've, I've seen a compass or two in my time. Corgo, what's that other thing there? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's pendant. Um, I, uh, Corgo, could you... Uh, be so kind as to grab that for okay. me as well. Yeah. Tippy toes. Do you want to try to appraise the pendant? Is it magical? I cast Reed Aura on it. It is not magical. Sure, I'll try to appraise it. It would be crafting usually, unless it's a society check, I think. Corgo has almost no interest in the value of things. Doesn't even make sense. What about the value of our friendship? <laughs> hmm. Priceless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who is trying to appraise this thing? Yeah, I, I will. And I think, is that Kathy said you'd try? Yeah. Oh, I got a natural 20 for a 25. I'm just going to let that roll then. You know exactly what this is. It is a gold pendant with a garnet, and it is worth 15 gold pieces. Yike, Rumba. Uh, Corgo, I better hang on to that. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Not even going to put up a fight. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's useless, right? I mean, don't you just <laughs> wear it? Uh, yes, I, I might wear it. Okay, sure, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you don't see anything else that looks valuable in the trees. I'm gonna go look in the clearing itself. I'm still trying to figure out, uh, following the put- footprints, which I assume lead into the clearing. They do, yes. So you follow around the side of the hill, up through the trees, following the path of broken branches, and into the clearing. And I'll go ahead and just move everybody up there unless you're taking any special precautions. Is anybody sneaking or anything like that? I'm with these other people. There's no point in sneaking. Those birds would have killed anything in here. Okay. I think think Jonesy would have taken one additional look in the trees to see if there was anything else. Like, were they just mostly concentrated in that one area they came out of? Yeah, you you don't see any other ravens. They were only in that one area. Okay. They just flooded to surround you once you came close. And now there aren't any left. You push through the brush, reaching a small clearing at the top of the hill. You're greeted by a strange sight. A small, extremely hairy fellow sitting on the ground next to what is clearly the missing top of the raven statue. He looks up at you and you see his eyes are puffy and red. Let me show you a picture. So let me share something with you here. Do you know this cartoon (laughs) character? (laughs) Uh, yes. Yes. Who is this cartoon character? I don't remember the name. Oh, man. That's Captain <laughs> Caveman. Captain Caveman. I'm pretty sure I saw him on, like, the school walls and stuff. What show was he from? He was an old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. It was his own show? He had his own show. Captain Caveman and the Teen Angels. And now I want to show you the official Paizo art for this <laughs> other creature. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 Minus the cape, it's basically spot on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this... <laughs> yeah, Josh. It seems like a small, small creature yes. with a very large hooked nose, pointed ears, and his head and torso blend together because they are completely both covered <laughs> in just hair. With right. like beard little, and hair. Little bald, hairless arms and legs. Sticking out. You think he might have some clothes on under that hair? You see, like some shorts. I, I highly doubt that. Uh, I don't know that I do think that. I mean, I, I think he, he's sporting some feathers in his beard and an anklet, and I think that's all he's got. Maybe the, the text suggests he has little bits of clothing underneath, but maybe not. Maybe not. He has a, a, a club, some pointy ears. I'll continue the description. I just wanted to make sure to impress upon you 
the incredible resemblance to Captain Caveman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is like in like SpongeBob or Ren and Stimpy when they they're in their normal cartoon mode and then they'll stop and do like a fancy portrait. This is what yes. it's like. Yes. Yeah. I think it's very important to point out that he's wearing an anklet, which is the same as the jewelry piece that Andreas has, which proves that wearing jewelry is valuable. Okay. You get it? <laughs> you get that, Gorgo? You get it? It's like a long way to go for that argument, but okay. That's a really weird dissertation topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he looks up at you, and you see his eyes are puffy and red, and he sniffs dramatically. Now even her ravens are gone. I'll never see her again. <laughs> and he bursts into tears. And a tendril of hair reaches up and wipes his eyes for him. Oh. Oh, cool. And he just sits there sobbing. Uh, can I, before we approach, can I roll to see what this creature might be? Certainly. Make a nature check. No. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a five. I'll roll one. You think it is probably some kind of dangerous monster. Corgo. Definitely. You also think this is probably some kind of dangerous monster. It might want to eat you. Jonesy, you don't know what this is, but it doesn't seem dangerous. It seems just kind of sad. It's super dangerous. Super dangerous. I got I, I got a five. I guess they. I keep forgetting these are supposed to be secret. They're supposed roles, to be but yeah, secret, I, but you know, I, I tend not to want to do them as secret. If you want to do them as secret, we can. Totally up to you. I mean, there might be circumstances where I really don't want you to know something, mm -hmm. but I trust you to role play what your numbers say. If that's okay with you, if you want me to make them secret checks, I'll make them for you. What would you prefer? No, this is good. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Be careful, everybody. Its beard is alive and will choke you to death. No, no, no. I'm. I'm pretty sure those are. Those are tears falling from his face. It's a it's a lie though. I think it's I think it's faking tears so that it can trick us into approaching. Why well, dodge it? But look how cute he is. <laughs> yeah, he is cute. <laughs> Very cute. There's no way he's he's um, harmful if he's that cute. I mean he doesn't even have any pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that is fair. All of my most dangerous foes in the past were naked, Jonesy. Yes. Even the undead have pants, typically. So th this creature here must be harmless. Uh, Andreas, uh, at a future point, I'd like to hear more about these dangerous foes that were lacking pants, but probably not the time. It's a dark, dark past, <laughs> Zankath. Uh, it will take many drinks for you to get that out of me. Oh, fascinating. <laughs> the Pantless Adventures by Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonesy, sorry. What do you know about this thing? <laughs> I don't know much. I can tell you this much. He's he's very cute, and he's very sad. I I I will I'll go say hello to him. Yeah, none of you were able to roll high enough to be sh sure of what this thing is. Jonesy, I'll say you got real close. I'll say that you think it's probably a fay. It's probably a fay creature. Okay, so who's walking up to the creature? Jonesy is? Uh, yes, unless, I mean, I don't have the greatest diplomacy, but... Do it. Okay. Uh, Jonesy will kind of hunch a little bit lower, put his scimitar away, have his hands uh, showing that he's got no weapons, and he'll sort of approach quietly. Hello there, the little friend. Hello. <laughs> oh, no, 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 come now. There's no need for tears, especially in such a beautiful place as this. Well, what's your name? <sighs> I'm Shaggy Shemvin. Shaggy Shemvin. <laughs> how, how delightful. Uh, Who are you? Well, my name is Jonesy, and here are my associates. Coco. Have you seen a beautiful woman with a raven head? No. Uh, do you mean like a ladybird? Sort of, yes. She's so beautiful. When did you last see her? Well, I was carrying a big rock near here one day, as you do. And I saw the most beautiful raven woman. I've thought and thought about how to talk to her and what to say to her. 
but I'm just too nervous. Then I remembered the raven rock, so I broke off the carving and I brought it up the hill, hoping she would see it and talk to me. But she never returned. In fact, those ravens got really mad at me, and they wouldn't even let me leave the hilltop. I guess I can leave now, but what's the point if I could never meet the raven woman? I don't know what to do. Where, where will I go? Why bother at all? <laughs> yes, uh, women do cut deep from time to time. So you you carry rocks back and forth. Is is that how you? I don't know what you kids call hobbies these days. Well, doesn't everyone? <laughs> Some sometimes, occasionally, I might find a nice one and, and relocate it. But it it seems as though that is your your. Is that like a job? Perhaps you have. Um, it's more like a hobby. And this beautiful Raven woman. Does she seem interested in your rock carrying? She never even talked to me. So then you, a strapping young lad such as yourself with an incredible hobby... Oh, stop it. ...that requires time and patience, is it really worth getting to know a woman who really does not care about caring rocks? He sort of stares up at the sky and says, Yes, it's the most worthwhile thing ever. Uh, excuse me one moment. <laughs> Jonesy will <laughs> turn to the others, kind of shrug. Jonesy, come now. You, you've uh, you've uh, given me plenty of advice on the lady folk in the past, and I think you're missing a glaring problem that I think is staring us all directly in the face. Oh, excuse me for missing something, sir. Why don't you go ahead and give it a shot? It's quite simple. The man needs a hat of some sort. <laughs> hat. Yes, women love men with hats. No, 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 we've talked about this before. No hats, it doesn't matter. What matters is what's under the hat. So the hair, he's got lots of that. Exactly, why would you cover it with a hat? Uh, but actually, uh, Andreas is going <laughs> to, as, this, as the, they debate uh, the virtues of attracting women and the fo fo follies of attracting women, uh, he's going to look at this, uh, the Raven Rock. Yeah, so this stone is huge. It's got to weigh around a thousand pounds. You think you might be able to roll it down the hill? You're not sure how you're going to get back into place. It would take some work. Zankath is going to approach Shaggy. Okay. So let me get this straight, dear Shaggy. Might yeah. I call you Shaggy? Sure. While the rock was whole, you saw this lovely woman. Yeah. And after the rock was no longer whole, you have not seen her since then. Yes. Well, perhaps it would draw her favor and draw her back here if you replace the rock. You think so? I certainly think it's worth a try. I mean, a strapping, strapping gentleman like you would catch the eye of many a raven-headed woman. Ooh, we can put it back in place. I can use my magic to secure it, but I would need some help from you to stabilize it before I do that. Oh, I'm, s I'm certain we would be happy to help you. I cannot guarantee that this would work, but I think it is a valiant effort to make. Magically, it makes magical sense. I suppose it's worth a try. Oh, excellent, Shaggy. I'm so happy to hear that. Make a diplomacy check, someone. Especially probably Zancath, it sounds like. Maybe Jonesy is aiding? Yeah, Jonesy, you might want to try to aid. Sure do. Although, again, DC 20 for aid, it's really difficult. 14. That did not aid, but there's no penalty. Zancath? 18. All right, you did it. You make some good points. It's worth a try. I'll see what we can do. Give me a moment. And he stands up, this little guy, and he walks over to the stone and incredibly, he sticks his hands under it, and with great effort, but nonetheless amazingly, he just lifts it up. Whoa. This thousand pound stone. He just lifts it up and walks down the hill. Gogo, I think you are right. He does look quite dangerous. Definitely dangerous. 
probably paintless. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> and he walks over to that big stone on the side of the hill. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, fellas, can you, uh, can you uh, follow oh, and falling, assist, falling. With, please, I'm please? Going. Yes, got it. So he walks over <laughs> to that big stone on the top of the hill, and he walks straight into it, and disappears. Oh. And then he reappears at that stone to the southwest. Oh, so he like stone walks with the rock, oh. right? Crazy. That's cool. He stone walks with the rock. He reappears at that other stone near the stone semicircle, and he walks up to the Raven Rock, and he holds the stone up, but he's short, and he's having trouble getting it back up there. You're not sure how he broke it off. He's going to need some help. Yeah, Andreas will run we're, over. We're coming, Shaggy. Dear, you move much quicker than we do. We're, we're, we're right behind you. All right, so he stands there. This is really heavy. Yeah, so uh, Andreas will attempt to like stabilize it in place and you know, hold it up. I think he'll need everybody's help because this thing is pretty heavy. What I need you to do, if you're all going to help him put the stone in place, you can do that without making a roll. But I need you to describe what you're going to do to stabilize it in place while he begins casting the spell. So what are you going to do? And then you'll have to make a check. What are you going to do to try to secure it in place so it doesn't just fall off while he's casting a spell? Can we take like logs and stuff and put them to brace the thing up, you know, on each side? Sure. Are you going to get some logs from the hill? Yeah. Okay. We'll cut some stuff apart if we have to. I've got some. I've got some rope. Okay. Try great. And... Yeah. So you can try to sort of tie it down, and then yeah. prop it up with some twigs, some tree trunks. Uh, it'll take some time to cut the trees down. Does anyone have an axe? Nope. I've got a short sword, but it's not really mm. made for chopping down That's trees. That's not great at chopping down trees, it's true. No. Yeah, you don't quite have the right tools, although the rope is very helpful. Any other ideas for things you want to do since the tree chopping is not going to go well? Yeah, could Jonesy kind of just observe from like a few feet away and just kind of help ensure that it's like balanced as everybody's trying to coordinate how to put it on top. He can be like, no, no, lean to the left, lean to the right. You stole my thing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you're going to have to chop wood with your hands. Oh. I also have a, the cantrip ray of frost. Maybe I could like, we could pour water into place and I could freeze it. And then try to oh, the, break the tree, ooh, snap yeah. the tree. Oh, you freeze the, you're saying you want to freeze the Maybe stone in place. Freeze the stone oh. in some strategic areas. That's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. I think you've, between the rope and the freezing the water in place, I think that's a great idea. So, Jonesy, you're attempting to aid? Yeah. All right. Make a check. A um, craft or nature check. So roll that skill. Oh, sweet. Okay. We'll do nature in that case. Oh, 14. 14. I'm afraid it does not help. Who is going to actually position the thing in place and make a crafting or nature check to try to make it stable. My crafting's plus five. Has anybody got a higher nature than that? I do not. Okay, I'll try that. Anybody have, uh, like, the guidance cantrip or anything like that? No, for no. sure not. <laughs> but I can aid you. All right, aid I'm, me. Uh, I'm aid good me at that. Well, you did okay with those traps. Perhaps you could help me out. Can more than one character aid? That's up to you. I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> I think the rules say you can only okay. do one, right? Or is that wrong? GM's note. In general, more than one person can provide aid. My confusion in this instance is due to the adventure path, which specifically says that only one person can aid in this situation. All right. Fingers crossed. I also got a 14. Okay. It does not work. All of you strain to hold this stone in place. You try and you try, and Shaggy is trying to help you too, but it just topples off and falls to the ground. Hmm. You can try again. However, the strain has made you all enfeebled one. Oh, of course. Oh. What? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you can try again. Even those who just stood by and observed? Uh, well, I assume you were all trying to hold ropes in place at least a little bit. Sure. It was really hard. But you know observing. what actually says the participating <laughs> PCs. So I guess that's really Jonesy and Andreas who are enfeebled one. Okay. Uh, the other people weren't aiding or actually doing it. So I guess Horgo and Zankath are not actually enfeebled. 
Anybody have some other ideas for how we could stabilize this thing while he casts his spell? You can try it again if you want. It's just that you are now enfeebled one, so there'd be a, a penalty to your... It's a strength best. It's a strength things. penalty, right. So it wouldn't yeah. really matter much. It would just um, affect your strength for a while. Is there a larger forest we can go? You know, we're not equipped to, say, chop down a tree at this moment, but can we go find ones that are uh, already been felled naturally and carry them over? Might take a little bit of time, but we just failed, so. Uh, make a survival check. We'll see what you can find nearby. Sure, I can do that. Yeah. Perhaps Shaggy could just find a bunch of smaller rocks and shape them into the face of a raven and put them on top that way. That would work, right? Yeah, like an art project. All right, yes. Corgo gets a 20. Corgo <laughs> finds a couple of trees that have fallen, and you think they might do the job. They might help you hold it in place if you want to try again. Yeah. And in fact, we'll count that as an aid attempt, and you rolled a 20, so that will nice. give a plus one to this check. All right. Uh, I'll try crafting again. Unless It's crafting or nature. Yeah, crafting or yeah. nature. Yeah. So crafting with plus one. Can I use my... No, we can only eight. One person yeah, only eight. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Oh, my gosh. No. Nine. Nine. Oh, come on. Nine and N-E-I-N nine. <laughs> I'm afraid that does not work. The stone again begins to topple, and this time Shaggy sort of grabs it to prevent it from hitting the ground. And he says... This isn't working. I knew I'd never talk to her again. <sighs> are are there any animal? Can we can we try again? You can try again. We're gonna be enfeebled too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So Corgo and Andreas are enfeebled too now. How do I give myself that? It looks like all right. The icon looks like a muscly dude. There we go. Boom. What if uh, we did like a pulley system? If there's actually a no, I'm sorry. Corgo, you're enfeebled one. You weren't enfeebled before, right? Or were you? I, I just didn't click the thing. No, he was I think he wasn't, but no, it was Andreas. Jonesy is... and Cargo should be enfeebled one, and yeah. I'm enfeebled two, because right. I've tried twice. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Can I look around for some sign of larger, nice animals in the area that we could use to assist us? You could, but you know that you're not expecting to see much around here. But you can you can make a check. Uh make a Perception or a survival check? Uh, unnatural 20 on perception. In the far distance, you know that the camp is there, and there are plenty of big mammoths that might be helpful, but you know that there's nothing near here. In fact, you know that uh, Raudrosh is a nature spirit, a nature demigod, basically, is keeping animals away from the site in anticipation of the upcoming green moon ceremony so you don't think there are going to be any animals nearby unless you bring one it's got to be something we can do the dc is not high i feel bad that you guys yeah. are not passing it but you're so <laughs> close can we construct some kind of like a pulley system is there like a really tall tree nearby that we could swing the rope over and kind no, of the, try the to trees are up on the hill there are the other stones nearby though yeah could we try something like that like roll it maybe yeah, maybe he, uh, Shaggy can bring other stones, these other big boulders. He's obviously can lift them. Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. he likes that idea. Yeah. What Good a idea. great idea. I could lift some more stones. I love doing that. <laughs> so he picks up that stone that's close by and stacks it next to the Raven Rock. And then he goes up the hill and he says, this stone is too big. Will you help me roll it? Yeah. I'll help. Okay. Sure. Corgo, make a make an athletics check. Oh, cool. I'll accept I'm enfeebled, but whatever. Here you go. Whoa. Whoa. 26. <laughs> 26, a natural 20. All right. So yes. we're going to call that an aid with an athletics check. Oh, but it's a plus two then. But it's going to be Corgo's a plus two. A four, That's and right. If you get to 30, then it's a plus two on the aid. Right. So it moves up one success category. So that is a critical success. And that means that, Sean, if Andreas wants to try again, he'll get a plus two. Plus two to craft. craft. Yeah, so you... But if Jonesy does it, he has a plus seven. If we want to really munchkin this. Sure. If you want to use it, Jonesy for crafting, is that what you're saying? No, he's I've got, got a, a, it's, He's got a nature. nature. Right. No, Jonesy yes. can kind of tell us what to do. I've got you know. a plus four to nature. Oh, so it would be survival. plus seven. Oh, yeah. never mind. Sorry. If I can use survival, though. 
No, it has to be nature or crafting. Yeah. Never mind. So Craft you've got time. these stones stacked on top of each other, and now Shaggy is up there, sort of helping hold it in place while he's going to start casting the spell, and the rest of you are also helping hold it in place, and you've got ropes and trees holding it in place. Andreas, try again. Though so this is hero point territory, man. I have none left. <laughs> no, you didn't get one for the session? When did you? Uh... I don't know. Well, I think we start. We can start this session with everybody having a hero point. I think that's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm racking. I have nothing else that I can. I think will help. So um, nothing else to boost this roll. So a plus seven. Yeah. A 17. There you go. All right. It works. You have stacked up so much stuff around this rock that it's not going anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) And Shaggy begins casting this spell, and gradually he shapes the stone so that the broken piece rejoins the base. And he steps back and looks at it, and he nods approvingly. A little smile comes over his face, and he says, That does look better. Fascinating. Thanks, friends. And then he stops and looks around. I don't see any raven woman, though. Uh, patience is the better part of picking up chicks, Shaggy. <laughs> May I ask, you, uh, you live out here somewhere? I just live around. I walk with stones, look at them, carry them. You know. Excuse my crudeness in phrasing this as uh, indelicately as I'm about to, but uh, what are you? Oh, <laughs> I'm a corrid. Corrid. What are you? I am a human. Well, human, I should have just left it alone. Such a beautiful rock with a beautiful raven, I shouldn't have broken it. But now you've got uh, a reputation as a a person who restores and uh, preserves ancient history. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Ladies like that. Do they? (laughs) Oh, yes, of course. (laughs) Sankath nods sagely. (laughs) (laughs) Certainly don't want to be uh, uh, going around being known as a vandal. Probably not. What's a vandal? Uh, Someone who uh, breaks raven rocks in half and escorts uh, sacred stones off premises. Oh, sounds like that is a bad idea. So where are you all from? Are you all humans? Oh, I'm a halfling. Oh, okay. So, where are you going now? Uh, Well, actually, um, our our destination was here, so uh, we will spend a little bit of time here, making sure that everything is fine, and then we will uh, rejoin our following. Following? Uh, Yes, it's the group of people that we live with. Do you have mammoths? Uh, Yes, indeed, we do. I love mammoths. They're so hairy. (laughs) (laughs) They, they are indeed quite hairy. Could I, could I come see your mammoths? Sure, I don't see that being a problem, Shaggy. You don't uh, like eat we'll... mammoth hair or something, do you? Eat hair? Do you eat? Do you eat hair? No, absolutely not. Just making sure that you weren't like a mammoth for. Oh my God, this man is the best. Andreas, <laughs> can you live with us? <laughs> do we have room in the tent? I don't make room. <laughs> he doesn't take up that much space, I guess. He's pretty small. I want to see the mammoths. Of course, Shaggy. Uh, just let us do a little bit of work here, and uh, we'll happily take you back to see the mammoths. So you look around the area, checking to make sure that everything is in place, and now that you've fixed the stone, it looks like the site is ready. There are no dangerous creatures. There are no signs of anyone else having been here recently. Aside from, of course, Shaggy Shemvin. Um, I, I do have one more question for you, Shaggy. Yes. Those those ravens, well, when did they uh, approach? I suppose it was a couple days ago. Was it after you had moved the rock or before? Oh, they've been around since before I moved the rock. They were, I think, they were friends with the raven woman. And then when you brought the rock over, they wouldn't let you leave? Yes, they were very unhappy about that. Interesting. Uh, so the the ravens were here and they weren't bothering you before you broke the rock. Is that correct? That's right, yes. Is that important? Perhaps. It's always good to 
learn things. Everyone's tiptoeing around it, but you basically made it happen. Oh. It's okay. We helped you fix it. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, thank you. Uh, just just use, use caution in the future with which rocks you uh, break. Oh. Thank you. I'll... I'll stick to rocks that are already broken. Excellent. Do you need any rocks? I, 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 I am curious if you've seen any other uh, particularly fascinating, large, magical, engraved, anything like that, rocks in the area. Perhaps um, important sites of ancient power or something. There's another set of big stones to the east. I haven't been there in a while, but if we head in that direction, I could probably point them out to you. Uh, are they far? Oh, yes. Several days. Hmm. Well, we don't have time to go there now. We have this uh, green moon ceremony coming up, but... You know, I mean, if you're hanging out with the mammoths, perhaps it's something I uh, uh, you could help me check out in the future. Sure. Anything else you want to do here? No, I don't think I'm so. Good. I think you have resolved rock loom. We don't have to like sweep the area. No, like, it's. I mean, you've anything? already had a look around, and you don't see <laughs> There's anything no, like magic items on this other hill on the other side of the map. No, <laughs> that other hill is apparently decorative. No dead bodies in the river or the stream up here. No, although the ash continues to flow downstream. Oh, oh yes, bummer. We are up river from where we were. You are a bit upriver, yes, from where you okay. were before. All right, well, I think we've settled everything here, Shaggy. Would you like to, uh, uh, I don't know, what's a, what's a Scooby-Doo appropriate term for get out of here? Um, Zoinks! <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I don't know. I can't. It's been far too yeah. long since I've watched any Scooby-Doo. Yeah, I can't. Maybe I don't know what he doesn't want to say. be associated with Shaggy. Do you think about that? <laughs> ruh <Ruh-roh. laughs> <laughs> so you trudge back to camp, this time with Shaggy Shemvin. He's quiet, but he seems considerably more cheerful than when you first met him. Occasionally, he'll spot a large stone not far from the path, and he'll point at it and nod approvingly. That's a nice one. <laughs> As you approach camp just after noon, a bellow erupts from the grazing grounds of the mammoth herd. You watch as the herd tenders quickly move to quiet a trumpeting mammoth who lifts an injured leg to reveal several quills embedded in her foot. And as you approach the area, two herd tenders that you know as Cholte... Cholte? Cholte? How's that pronounced? C-H-U-L-T-E-I. Let's say Cholte. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Sure. Cholte and Inig rush over to soothe the injured mammoth. Inig spots you as you approach and calls out, Hey! There's a porcupine around here somewhere. Come look and try to move it away from the mammoths. You better show us what those quills look like first. You walk up toward the mammoth. You can see that they are carefully removing some quills from this mammoth's foot. And it's trumpeting. But of course it knows they're there to help. And they are doing a very good job. They've just about removed all of them. Do they look like actual porcupine quills? Or are they like the barb spikes? They do look like actual porcupine quills. Oh, okay. If you want to make um, a nature check, I can maybe tell you more. I do want to make a nature check. And are we enfeebled for the day? Let's see what it says about how long you're enfeebled. So I'm going to wrestle this porcupine. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> oh, no, sir. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's dead. It is a mammoth. I stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a great point. <laughs> It says they are fatigued. Each subsequent failure makes them enfeebled one, and then it advances for as long as they're fatigued. <laughs> but how long is that? It doesn't say. Mm, what's the rule on fatigued? Uh, full night's rest. Full night's rest. Okay, great. So you are enfeebled until you get a full night's rest. Okay. Did you make that nature check? You did. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, you can tell just from looking at these, these aren't ordinary porcupine quills. These are giant porcupine quills. Of course. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, you remember how I said it's probably dead? Well, it's probably only mostly dead. <laughs> <laughs> Chulte says, if we don't find the porcupine, this is just going to happen again. I want to look around for porcupine prints. All right, make a perception check to seek. I would also like to know how excited Shaggy is about the mammoths. Shaggy is just standing there in awe, just his mouth agape. He reaches out and gently strokes the mammoth's side and says, So hairy. 
<laughs> oh, he's so wholesome. I love him so much. Uh, what was the second mammoth tender's name? Sorry. Chultai, uh, Chultai and, and Inig. While, while Zankath is looking at the ground for footprints, she very idly just says, um, this is this is Shaggy. He's very nice and wanted to see the mammoths. Uh, and I got a 26. All right. Yeah, the two of them are eyeing Shaggy a little nervously, but he looks really harmless and very gentle. You roll a 26. You look around the area and you notice that this mammoth appears to have trudged down from a little hill. You search the nearby area around this hill using the flattened grass as a guide to where the mammoth has been, and you find a small burrow entrance nearby on the side of the gentle slope of the hill. And just inside this burrow entrance is a massive giant porcupine. And as you peek around at it, it hisses at you angrily. And it's warily eyeing both you and occasionally popping its head out and looking around at the mammoth. And since you rolled so high, you also spot something behind the giant porcupine. Two little porcupets stumbling around the burrow. Now, go look up porcupet. Go do just a quick Google search for porcupet. Okay. Oh, cute. Oh, it's like a Pokemon. Gotta catch it. It's adorable. Aww. Yeah. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So we're really not supposed to kill anything in this adventure path. <laughs> yeah, we're, not, we're, not going to kill, we're not killing. We're not killing anything at well, all. Well, this big porcupine looks like it's uh, not very happy with you. It looks pretty unfriendly. Is it actively hostile? By it chance? does seem pretty hostile, although it does appear to be okay. focusing on shielding the porcupets from you, and it keeps eyeing the mammoth. We need to move the mammoth to another area to graze. Seems the best way of best course of action to me. That makes sense. Shaggy says, Can I go with it? The mammoth? Uh, y- yes. You should meet Imek. She'd probably really like you, too. Okay. So are you going to tell Chulte and, and Enig to move the mammoth away? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to point out the uh, porcupine uh, layer to them so they know where to avoid. Right. Good. Yeah, so they move the mammoth away and Shaggy follows along just patting the mammoth on the side and you are going to try to calm the animal or you're going to try to tame the animal I mean I would I don't really need to tame it I would kind of just like to calm it okay you can make a nature check it is now possible since you've moved the mammoth away you can make a nature check to try to calm it down it sounded good 19 19 yeah. 19 sounded like a 19 yeah <laughs> it sounded like a 19 so you rolled high enough. If you want to tame this, you can tame this. Do it. Porcupine. Absolutely do it. I would love to roll with a porcupine. <laughs> oh, cool. Is there any benefit to us having a porcupine? Basically, you can have it join the following if you want. I, I know, but is there a benefit <laughs> to that? Look at those. <laughs> look at the porcupets. They're yes, the cutest I... thing in the world. You're, you, Everybody wants that. There are more mouths <laughs> to feed as well, though. Porcupets are the benefit. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just going to calm it. Okay. And like, you know, as Imek taught me. Oh, man. Peer pressure fail. You calm the animal down and you sort of mark the area. that And Enig and Chulte know about this spot now. So they'll make sure the mammoths stay away from it. The quills settle down. It stops hissing and it lays down in the entrance to its burrow. And it's watching you, but it's not panicky. It does keep them inside the burrow. It doesn't let them out. Okay. However, if you did want to befriend them, you probably could if you devote a bit of time to it over the next day or so. Okay. If you change your mind. Chulte and Enig come over and and they're impressed. That was amazing. If you can make them friendly, we could probably keep them separate from the other animals. Nice work. Is there a benefit to having them around? Well, the quills can be used for things. We can use the quills to make uh, uh, fishing hooks and lures, and we can. They do make good meat, but if we only had this small number, we probably wouldn't eat them. I would hope not. Quills are useful, though. Okay, I'll spend some time to befriend them. Okay, you probably want to do that in some downtime. Yeah. At the moment, you need to return and report. I'll plan to come back to befriend them later. Okay. So you return to the camp, and as you're approaching the field where all your tents are pitched, Letsua of Otter House comes out to greet you. 
He looks delighted. He says, You've returned, and you've brought a new friend. Please introduce me. And you notice that Shaggy has started following a bit behind you. <laughs> Who's going to talk? Come on, somebody do it. <laughs> oh, this is, this is Shaggy. Uh, we met him at uh, Rockloom, and he was very helpful to us, and he wanted to see the mammoths. Well, you've certainly exceeded expectations. It is a pleasure to meet you, Sha- Shaggy. Shaggy. I'm Shaggy. Grandfather Ewa has been informed that you have completed the three tasks, and he asks that you visit his tent early tomorrow morning. You've earned a rest for the remainder of the day. Why don't I give Mr. Shaggy a tour, and you can do as you please. Now remember, go to Grandfather Ewa's tent first thing in the morning. He'll have more for you to do, and if you're restless and looking for work today, there are always things to do around the camp. Uh, let's do it before, before you go. It, yes. I just want to make it clear we've all discussed it, and um, Shaggy will be staying with me and Andreas. Certainly. And I assume everything was all like, acceptable at Rock Loom? Uh, we cleaned up whatever mess there was. Wonderful. Well done. We're all so impressed. You'll be excellent scouts. Very well, then. Enjoy your rest, or keep busy if you like. Hmm. What to do, what to do. So here are some things you could do around camp. Oh, free time. Cool. If you want, you could just walk around and see what there is to do. There's always a need to gather firewood. You could do that. Basically, you can just walk around. If there's anything you want to do, you can, you can do it. You can just sort of see what falls in your lap, whatever you like. Uh, Andreas is going to uh, do a lap of the camp. I'm have to walk around and kind of see what people are up to. Does anyone else want to do that as well, or do you have other things you want to do? Cargo would seek out healing because he's hurt. Uh, Zankath is befriending a porcupine. Okay, Zankath's going to make friends with a porcupine. <laughs> she hates it so much. <laughs> She's the best one at it, and she hates it. You're like, the, you're, you're like a Disney princess that hates being a Disney yeah. princess. <laughs> I hate my job. <sighs> Jonesy is going to make it sound like he's really busy and he's got a lot of stuff to do. And then okay. he's just going to sneak back into his hut and take a nap. <laughs> okay, yeah. I respect it. Yeah. Corgo, let's see if someone can heal you. You go looking for a healer, and Andreas, you also notice the same thing. Corgo's looking for a healer, and he finds Nacta, the healer, the half orc head of Moose House. You actually find Nacta treating a hunting party that has recently returned, and Andreas, you see the same incident occurring. These hunters, Erdic, Gribben, and Garva, apparently went hunting for a woolly rhinoceros and it looks like Gribbon got gored and trampled Oof. and Nacta is trying to treat poor Gribbon. He will also treat Corgo. Corgo, you get... <laughs> Corgo feels so bad. He yeah. shows up. What about me? <laughs> He's nearly dead and Corgo's like, I got poked by a bird. <laughs> <laughs> poor Corgo. I also love how there's a healer in the party, but he just left. I did notice that. Yeah, yeah, I just abandoned me. And then you guys have to go. Jonesy's having a nap. He's got to have a nap. <laughs> After he finishes with Gribbon, you'll get 10 hit points. Nice. Erdic and Garva are sort of pacing back and forth. They look pretty bruised and beat up. Erdic explains that we were uh, we were trying to trap this, this woolly rhinoceros, but it just ran right over poor Gribbon. We were trying to distract it with this dream pollen snare, well, we're going to need some time to recover, but thankfully Nacta is here to help. And Garva mentions, we were hunting near where that, you know, that, that field where Pekano and Weohatan tried to kill that Orok? And you all know that Pekano and Weohatan went hunting for an Orok, like a big cow, basically, a wild cow. And that Weohatan was killed oh, wow. by this Orok. Garva says, I guess guess that territory must be bad luck. What was the w, what was the W name? Weohatan. Weohatan. Hmm. Is this is that hunting area near anything? It's not far from here. Mm. There's some tundra to the north that has some good hunting, but it's apparently dangerous. You know that Pacano returned to the camp alone in tears, covered in blood, saying that an Orok had charged at them and trampled Weohatan, and he led scouts back to the site only for everyone to discover that Weohatan had died from his wounds 
And you know that Whippa is Weohatan's widow. Right. She is pregnant with Weohatan's child. Oh, so this happened recently? Yes. Hmm. Seems like a cursed area. It's a bit over a week ago that this happened. But they're able to treat poor Gribbon. And poor Corgo. And eventually Corgo. <laughs> God, don't, don't rub it in. Poor Corgo. Everyone stops what cuts. they're doing. It looks like a bird poked you. Well, one got under my fingernail. Really hurt. Guys. <laughs> Gribbon says, it's not important. My leg had his fingernails. <laughs> Nacht, and Nacht is the head of Moose House. That's right. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep my notes. Yeah, those yeah. notes look really I'm trying. in depth. I don't. I, he's obviously dropping important things that are going to impact <laughs> the next six books. So, <laughs> gotta know. Maybe I don't know how important they are. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. All right. Well, Andreas is still hunting around for something interesting because yeah that wasn't interesting Corgo's just whining as far as he can tell he didn't even get blinded <laughs> so Corgo stays there and gets some treatment Andreas continues walking around the camp you see Picano returning to camp dragging a dead polar bear on a trevois what yes nice. he's got a dead polar bear and some younger members of the following gather around him to hear him tell of the hunt do you want to listen uh yes yeah he says I set a trap and I lay in wait and when the bear took the bait, I pounced. It was a mighty struggle, and the creature broke my spear. But I stunned it with my buckler, and I battered it until it lay broken in the snow. I am truly as mighty as my grandfather, Lomok. Wow, that's uh, incredibly impressive, Picano. You are truly uh, 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 growing into a fine warrior. I appreciate that you appreciate me. I appreciate that you appreciate that I appreciate you. Right on. <laughs> the children continue to gawk at the bear, but some of the adults nearby look away and try to appear busy as Picano rants about his success. Can I look at this polar bear? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Look at the polar bear. Yes. Make a perception check. How many wounds did it sustain that Picano totally didn't inflict? Okay, make a perception check. <laughs> I'm really uh. hoping it's a guy in a bear costume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a druid the whole time. Uh, I got a 20 miraculously. So you look at the bear. First, the bear is indeed a bear, not a man in a suit. And Aww. it is indeed a big <laughs> polar bear. But you also notice that the trap wounds on its foot suggest that it may have been trapped for some time and was probably severely hobbled during the fight. It was still a difficult foe for a single hunter, yeah. but the bear was probably badly injured before the fight even started. He throws his broken spear on the ground and says, now who among you little ones is most deserving of my spear? Go find me a new one, and you may have the one that was broken in this fight as a trophy. <laughs> Andreas looks over his shoulder. Is there any spears lying nearby? You can you can take someone's spear from a tent. The children all jump up and run off to get a spear from somewhere. <laughs> no, I won't. I Hurry, won't. Andreas, run. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> have a spear. I need to get this broken I need spear. A spear. <laughs> Picano's back. I love him. I will. Uh, I'll move on. Okay, Picano resumes dragging the carcass to his tent. He smirks at you as he walks away and says, "I guess I'll see you tomorrow." I guess I'll find out what you mean by that tomorrow. <laughs> guess you will. Maybe. Yes, I. <laughs> Oh, yeah, good, night, well. good night, Picano. <laughs> and good night to you. And good night to you. And, and, and then Andreas is like really far away. And he's like, good night to you, Picano. <laughs> around the corner. Uh, all right. So and the jerk store called. <laughs> <laughs> There's really not a lot else going on in the camp. You're all getting ready for tomorrow as is everyone else everyone is excited about the night of the green moon is there anything else anyone wants to do before bed uh i want to do something after dark but if anybody's doing something before that anybody else corga would seek out zanka okay and just tell zanka that she did an awesome job out there and also he'll ask if she'll take care of brahm if, if he ever if corga ever dies because yeah, that's on his mind because that you know they just killed two guys, and then you know he's, he almost died from birds, <laughs> and so now he's thinking about it, his mortality more than he has in a long time. So, when 
Corco asks that, St. Kath reaches up to put her hand on his forearm. Not really sure how high up she could reach on Corco, but like lays a hand on his arm and says, Corco, dear, during our current circumstances, were something to happen to you, chances are I am already dead. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm the best option at this point. But if I were to live beyond you, I would be happy to. Thanks, Zanketh. You did a great job. I mean, Zanketh took, kind of took care of Corgo and even Pekano probably, right? Weren't you, um, wasn't Zanketh taking care of kids yes. early on? Yes, in the beginning. You know, I think you did a great job with all of us and you know, Anka's going to need help with Brahm. I mean, you've you've seen him. He's just a mess of a kid. <laughs> uh, that's that's a two parent kid for sure. And anyway, it, I'd really appreciate it. You know, I'm often up front, and you've got you've got your range working for you. So I really think that you've got a better shot of surviving. You know, should it something really bad happen? Of course. Uh, I, I just appreciate I, it. I I hope it doesn't come to that, Corgo. I'm uh, the boy deserves to have you in his life. Yeah, I'm, I totally agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't plan on anything bad happening, but, you know, just in case. Just watch yourself. I, I, I shall do this. I shall watch your back and you make sure you're watching your front. I'm not really sure where I was going with that. Uh, totally makes sense to me. <laughs> watch your front. <laughs> Got it. Uh, Zankath is successful in befriending the porcupines. You are able to get them eating something, and uh, they seem pretty friendly. The little porcupets are uh, very friendly and very cute. What did Andreas want to do? After dark, Andreas is doing his usual setup where he, like, sets incense through and around the tent because he just, like, helps him kind of m- control his dreams and his nightmares. And Shaggy is there, by the way. He just Shaggy is there, and he stinks, <laughs> so he sets up, like, a couple aromatic... <laughs> bundles of like sage around him and uh andreas actually will look out northward kind of at the at, after dark as the campfires start to die down and he's looking out towards where this lub lobby said that there were bonfires burning he's wondering if he's been thinking about it on and off but he's wondering is is if he can see these bonfires that this creature was talking about a couple days ago do you think Maybe in the far distance, you might occasionally be able to catch a flicker of what might be light from fires, but you're not sure if it's that or star twinkling or something. Maybe uh, it's 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 so far away that you're not you're not sure. Hmm. He'll uh, he'll sit down outside the entrance of his tent with his meteor hammer and. He'll light the the, uh, the little brazier inside of it and look up at the stars, and he'll say, "Lady, Lady Desna, you looked out for me today. You took care of me when uh, great danger was approaching. You guided my hand to save my friends. And I thank you, and I will follow this path. Continue to uh, embrace the the night as you have shown me." I will find strength in closing my eyes. And then he will go off to sleep. Sir. Uh, sorry, Jonesy. Sorry, I'm try- not trying to wake you up. Oh, sorry. Could you please be quiet? Me and Shaggy are trying to sleep. You know I have to get up at dawn to pray to Sarah and Rain. Here you are outside. So, sorry. Uh, look, we're on opposing ends of the clock spectrum here. Yeah, I'm a twilight guy. You're a dawn guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm a little bit upset. I, uh... I hate Picano. <laughs> Shaggy sits up and says, Hey, is this normal that you talk when other people sleep? Look, Shaggy, you're a guest in this house, and you're going to have a conversation whenever we feel like it. Don't you talk to him that way. <laughs> Little Shaggy needs some I'm time. I'm sorry. Should I go somewhere else? No, 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 no. of course not. No, I, I've made this bed for you. It's perfect. Yeah, just you, you rest your head, Shaggy. And it's smelling much better now. Oh. Yes. Okay, thank you. Lays back down. Of course. Thank you. Any, anyways, I just wanted to say that i very upset. I hate Bacano, but I uh, can't help but feel like I might have stepped over a bound. Wait, how do you say it? I might have crossed, crossed the line. Boundaries. 
planets, universes, when I said that I <clears throat> hung out with his mother in a, in, a, in a manner before he knew she was dead. Do you think you should apologize to him? I never thought about it, but I just, I hate him. Do you think it would be appropriate for me to write him a letter as his mother saying that I loved him? I think that might be crossing <laughs> another line, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> you could write a letter as Jonesy saying that <laughs> you're, you are sorry. <laughs> uh, I've, I've heard in fairy tales that that works. That just apologizing to someone it seems seems <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I, I. I'll think about the mother idea more. Yeah, the letter idea. All right. But, well, uh, good mother. night, Jonesy. Yes. Good night. Good. My feet are a little cold. Can I borrow your socks? Yes. The, the, <laughs> Thank you. The, they're actually Shaggy's pillow, but you can take them. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> you head to sleep. It's a peaceful night. Some shooting stars fly overhead. The sun rises, the camp stirs. Everyone begins preparations for the green moon ceremony. Do you want to head to Grandfather Awa's tent, or do you want to do something else before you do that? Jonesy, are you going to do your prayers before we go? Oh, yes, I already did them in the morning while you were oh. sleeping. Oh, yes, okay. You sleep in because you're up all night talking. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're ready to go. I, go, I I'm forgot ready to, to go. mention something. You have an uh -oh. optional mechanic that we can use. Ooh. So you have already lured some friends to the following. That means you have some lieutenants available. If you wanted to, you could take them with you. So Shaggy is the most obvious one. But you could also take the moose. <laughs> and I think you might even be able to take the porcupine. Oh my god, we can bring a moose with us adventuring? Yes, I think you can take the moose with you. I think it counts as a lieutenant. If that's true, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great at conversation, but you could take it if you want. Yeah, I think we should take Shaggy for the conversations. Yeah, we should we should take Shaggy. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously magical. How many can we take? Just one. Oh, oh, oh man, that's a tough call. Oh. <laughs> Sophie's Moose. choice. Corrid. Moose Corrid. Can we see their stat blocks before we decide <laughs> how to load out? I don't think so. I think you have to just decide who's cooler. Okay, well, Shaggy then. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you want to take Shaggy with you when you go to meet Grandpa? When he dies, the porcupine. No. No, we can't take the porcupine until the porcupups oh, yeah. or porcupets are Oh, yeah. Older. True. 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 Okay. The five of you then walk over to Grandfather Awa's small squat tent. The flap is open and Awa stoops beside his fire ring. He smiles at you, but his expressive face, wrinkled from many years of good humor, is now a portrait of sadness. Come, sit, he says. He pokes the embers with a stick. Bring your new friend. I have heard about him. I had hoped you would never need to hear the story I am about to tell you. Or at least... I hoped that I would not be the one to have to tell it. He offers a rueful smile. That's where you tell me you're going to go in and sit. Yeah, we go I in and go sit. I go in <laughs> and sit. I will stand. I'm kidding. I'll sit. We, uh, yeah, we're, we're like wrapped with attention. We're finally getting the exposition Andreas <laughs> yes, has been yes. demanding. <laughs> How to make a long story short. I will try to put it simply. In the F gear, the before times... When my ancestors were young, we broken tusks were called the burning mammoths. Our migratory route was large then, as was our herd. We carried with us a powerful light, the primordial flame. He spreads the fire's coals into a wide, flat layer. In the center of the coals, a perfectly round pebble glows red hot. Then the great quake shattered the eastern lands. He tips a large jagged rock from the fire ring into the coal. Far as we were, our people still felt the thundering hooves of the demon horde. Earwigs and pillbugs scatter out of the hole left by the unturned stone. He looks at Andreas and Jonesy. 
You know of what I speak. Andreas gets goosebumps. Our mammoth lords argued over what to do with the light, the primordial flame. In the end, some of us took the flame and hid it where it would be safe. With his stick, he separates a few coals from the rest, then moves the red-hot pebble next to the small group. The other burning mammoths called us traitors and went east to face the demons, taking the banner of the burning mammoths with them. Weak, but determined to carry on, we took a new name, the Broken Tusk. That was long ago, and much has happened since, he says, dropping his stick into the fire. But now, the burning mammoths have returned, and in time for the night of the green moon, I cannot say what this means. My ancestors' spirits are silent. But my bones and your evidence tell me this will not be a happy reunion. I thank you for bringing us this evidence of the burning mammoths. I recognize that importance and the danger that this other following represents, as do the other mammoth lords. Nevertheless, the Green Moon Ceremony must take place. Our traditions are important, both to Sister Cinder and to the morale of the following. This was a harsh winter, and abandoning the ceremony might destroy our unity. And what if the threat does not materialize? We would end our tradition for nothing. The ceremony occurs tonight, after the last rays of the sun have faded from the southern sky. You are all to attend, as you have proven yourselves worthy as scouts. We will pack up and continue our migration before the sun even rises tomorrow morning. A following is less vulnerable on the move. The camp must be prepared for the ceremony, and for leaving quickly tomorrow. We all have our duties. The following tasks fall to you, our newest scouts, and I ask that you complete as many of them as you can before the sun goes far past midday. In other words, you have eight hours to complete these tasks. Clear the trail leading east from Rockloom so that we may leave quickly and without incident tomorrow morning. Dilute the spirits that will be imbibed at tonight's celebration. We would normally use the morning to recover from their effects, but now we cannot afford this. Go to the fermentation baskets and water down the spirits, or remove the most powerful herbs. Gather the scattered herd and prepare it for departure in the morning. You may do it yourselves, or assist the herders, or both, as you see fit. Prepare the camp by gathering loose supplies and ensuring that all is packed or ready to be packed quickly. You, our new Broken Tusk Scouts, are the vanguard of the following. Our eyes and ears, and our first defense... We are counting on you. And we'll find out what they do in two weeks. Oh. I'm pumped. What? I'm pumped. Ready to go. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Broken Tusk Rising. You can help the podcast by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, by chatting with us on Discord, and most of all, by supporting us on Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash the house of Bob. This show is possible due to all our patrons who get special zines, one shots, episode commentary, and other stuff for supporting the podcast. Art for this episode is by Sean makes audio production and music are by me, Mike hammock. Thanks for listening and roll on. Here? Yeah. Help us? No, put items in. Oh, or equipment, I, I think.
What? You have to clear the search. Oh. See, this is this is why I didn't want it. I wasn't going to add it to my character. <laughs> yeah. It is not worth it. Why? Why can't I just pick this up? I'm just going to comment okay. and like you know, as Imek taught me. Oh man, peer pressure fail. Sandcath, I will never forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley's going to be really upset. <laughs> That's true. Episode. No, I already had names picked out and everything. I will cut this out, and we can never tell her. <laughs> just tell her we killed them all that's fine but she'll never forget us for but, that either but we cut it out for you yeah know. we cut it out we bleeped yeah, it right yeah <laughs> why don't I give Mr. Shemvin uh oh you haven't told him that his name is no. Shemvin yet why don't How I do give <laughs> suspicious I've said too much <laughs> <laughs> I mean we could keep going if you want but do it get out of here don't be cowards <laughs> I gotta dilute those spirits. <laughs> We're a team. We're a team with no name. We need a name. Oh no. No, we don't. No, not that again. <laughs> oh. We're the Broken Test Trevois Club. Oh, the Trevois Club. <laughs> and I guess now's a good time to remind you that they we're using um Milestone experience. Yeah, miles, so exactly. Say. Milestone experience and you're getting close to the next level, but you're not there yet. Oh, brutal. Okay. It was the spirits. It was the dead gum yeah, spirits. If only <laughs> did, you had gotten to diluting those spirits, you would have gotten to second level. <laughs> oh, oh, brutal. Yeah, it's, it's like the, the, the checkpoints it has laid out here are like chapter one completes when they have diluted the spirits. And then the next chapter completes when you've <laughs> learned how to tie your shoes using the special knot. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to fail at that I so mean, bad. Yeah, we are. <laughs> this, de- this adventure definitely uh, gives me the impression because it seems to be talking a lot about downtime mechanics. Yeah. It definitely gives me the sense that, like, we want to know what those are or have some ideas of downtime mechanics we want to use. And that, like, it sort of even sounds like you would have to level up during downtime. At least that's my 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 impression. But like you know, they always make you level up in mid dungeon and stuff like that at some point. Mid-shoe-tie. So mid shoe tie, mid shoe tie. Yeah, they don't say in here that you have to level up during downtime. I mean, we could do it that way. It would kind of make sense. Well, we, you'll just have to wait and see how it goes. But yes, yeah. there will be opportunities for downtime for crafting, uh, that kind of stuff. Eventually, anyway, you've already had some opportunities for you know just looking around the camp, doing what you like. There will be more of that. <laughs>